Well, good afternoon from the Scott Learning Center. I'm Jay Mahaffey, manager of Bayer's Learning Center here in Scott, Mississippi. We're getting a lot, of, a lot of phone calls in the last few days about planting corn and some of the decisions that need to be made in, in the next few days as we establish our corn crop for 2022. Thought I'd make this video today and talk about some of the things and yield results that we observed last year and some of our plot work here on the site. Historically, in the southern United States, we've always tried to plant our corn as early as possible. A lot of years, we have some, some difficulties in the weather or climate uh, and getting things prepared, and, and we always tried to plant as early as possible. In 2021, we established a trial to evaluate the impact that some of these stressful conditions can have on the yield potential of our corn crops. We used a bunch of the common decisions that you'd have to make, population, hybrid, planting depth, planting date, are all included through this study, and I thought I'd discuss this uh, information today in this video. We planted a trial on our typical system here at the Learning Center. We planted March the 12th, April the 5th, and May the 10th. This was just corn that we farmed very much like you would a, a, any other Delta corn crop. It was on 38-inch single rows. Uh, we planted it on some of our mixed soils here on the site. Included in this research were two hybrids, those being two that are particularly well adapted here in our locality. That's six, uh, DeKalb 6744 and DeKalb 6599. We planted on three different dates. The dates are, are particularly important for the results of this study. March 12 was the first day we could plant. It was dry, but we were coming into a condition that was I would call it marginal at best. The, the temperature was cool. We had been wet for an extended period and were about to be wet for another extended period. So those conditions were kind of questionable. We planted into ideal conditions on April the 5th with a good forecast. And we planted May the 10th, which, meant, which is meant to represent as late as we would plant corn here most of the time. We planted two seeding rates per hybrid and per, uh, per depth to evaluate uh, the impact that that has. We have a, a quite a data set that talks about seeding rate and its importance in corn. We used the, the, the rates that were appropriate for the products we were planting. I would make a particular note though, we did not observe a lot of lodging or bird predation throughout this trial. Uh, the, the differences that we observed are, are mostly due to the impact that depth has on plant establishment, health, and so forth. When you look at the ultimate results, we measured a lot of different things. Some of those were plant parameters. Some of those were established stands. Some of those were the yields that we observed at the end of the year. When you look at the depths and the evaluations that we made of depth, we used two different depths. One of those being an inch and a quarter deep planting, and another was two and three quarters deep. The inch and a quarter deep is meant to represent uh, the the thought process of, well, I know I've got bad conditions coming, but it's, it's dry enough for me to plant corn, so I'm going to shallow the planter up to make, uh, to give myself the best chance possible to establish a stand. The two and three quarters deep uh, planting depth is, is the, the deep side of where we would plant corn. We aim about two inches deep here all the time, allowing for field conditions and so forth. And when you look at it, you can see that we established, on average across the dates, uh, you can see that we established a similar stand uh, regardless of what we did planting depth-wise. When you look at the actual stands established, you see here that on March the 12th, yes, there were a few, numer numerically there were a few more plants established an inch and a quarter deep, but not a lot more. And they won't account for the yield differences that we'll talk about uh, fully account for the yield differences we'll talk about through the rest of the data. But the important point here is that planting depth is such an important parameter to establish at planting in corn that we did not make a, a great deal better stand even in those marginal conditions by planting shallow and, and it did not uh, change really through the planting dates very much. When you think about the influence planting depth has on corn, it influences rooting mass, rooting volume, the emergence of uniformity, and many of the other things that help us to establish and optimize yield potential through the year. So we typically here aim to be a little deeper. Uh, if there's a decision to be made, we aim to be a little bit deeper a lot of times than we do shallow. So you have to adjust that for each field condition, but those were the results we observed in the number of plants established. 
When you look at some of the plant parameters that we measured, we actually measured ear height through this. And when you look at those, uh, that early March planting, you can see that at both of the depths, the ear height was reduced. Now, that, that's regardless of depth. I think that's indicative of some of the stressful conditions that we observed across the, the course of this study early. Uh, we were planting in the marginal conditions in March. It was cool. It was wet. It was pretty miserable condition. And we did drive the ears a, a bit higher when you planted on to, the, to that uh, early April date. I think it, the the impacts that, that stress has on the early formation of, of the corn plant and the corn ear can can be observed and, and carried through some of this data as we talk about it. Here's where the real news is. When you look at the yield result, you see that in that March the 12th date, regardless of depth, uh, we made 194 bushels an acre ac averaged across both hybrids and both planting depths. When you look at the April 5 date, we averaged 238, which is a, 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 either a penalty or a gain of 44 bushels an acre from planting into those marginal conditions in mid-March versus planting in early April, which is kind of our ideal date here. There's also an important note to be made here. When you look at that last planting date, uh, it was actually numerically a little more and, and probably similar to the first planting date where we planted into stressful conditions. I think this is a result of some of the, the localized breeding efforts that have occurred in the last several years, you know, eight or 10 years. We've, we've started to select some of these products in these high heat index, very high humidity southern environments, and that's allowing us to, to at least not have the, the penalty that we'd have had 20 or 25 years ago from planting over into the late end of the planting cycle. So when you look at it, these are, these are all parameters that are important for the decision making when you get ready to lay out the 22 crop. Now when you look at the individual hybrid result, it does swing around a little bit on the, on the ends, you know, on the early or the very late planting date. But regardless of that, when you look in that, that sort of ideal window of early April, you will see here that we made the highest yields. This is uh, DeKalb 6744, when you look, we made the higher yields there on the on the mid-date or the ideal date, and we also did it at the optimal population for that product. The, the results are similar. When you look at uh, DeKalb 6599, you see that, one, yes, we made the higher yield there on that optimal date of early April, and we actually made a, a higher yield where we planted the, prop, the population that, that is best suited for that particular product to be planted. So in summary, when you look at it, uh, what we saw uh, in this data from, from 22 was planting in early or mid-March versus early April. There was a 44 bushel either penalty or gain, depending on how you view it, from planting on that date, which amounted to at last year's prices somewhere on the order of about 200, and, you know, high 230, $240 an acre or so difference in the in the potential of the crop probably be more this year based on grain prices but the, that's what we calculated from last year when you look at it the, the a lot of this gain is is probably coming from establishing the corn plants in a healthy period of time it allows the plants to be uh to to emerge as uniformly as possible they establish the biggest ears that that they could or larger ears than they would when they're planted into those miserable conditions and uh, there were a few more plants where we planted shallow on that earlier date, but it does not account for all of this, this yield difference that we observed. So when possible, we need to plant uh, based on the, the conditions that are coming up, looking at a good 10-day forecast, uh, rather than planting the first day we can because the, the field's dry enough. Uh, Depth did not have a big impact on stand establish regardless, establishment in this trial, regardless of what we did. And the benefits of planting deeper are, are so great that it's one of those things we can only establish at planting and needs to be carefully considered. So here on the Learning Center, the way we use this practically is we, we try to maintain a planting depth of two inches or deeper all the time. We have to adjust that based on field conditions and all the things that are going on in the field, draft, and, and all the things associated with dragging a planter through the dirt. But that's generally our, our direction that we take. And, and I would advise and, and think that 
we need to consider a good seven to 10 day forecast post planning and then make the decision to go out and plant. So with that, uh, I'd like to say thank you for your time. Y'all come see us this summer. We'll have a full research program in the field. We look, look forward to your visit. Thanks.